Hey everyone, Alex Italanda here. Look, it doesn't matter if you're a podcast listener or a podcast creator. Audio is obviously important, whether you're commuting to your job, working from home, or just taking a leisurely stroll. The new Neo earphones from Studio give you that superior quality and sound. With 10mm drivers for a dynamic bass and two air vents to relieve ear pressure, you're immersively transported to the audio world of the podcast you're listening to. You also get 5.5 hours of continuous playtime, which can be extended up to 20 hours with the charging case. And did I mention a free nifty vegan leather case with each order? You get all this plus an additional 15% off when you use the promo code OSTIUM15 at checkout. Another cool thing is that the Neo has an IPX4 ingress rated protection, which is a fancy way of saying it's splashproof. So whether you're at the gym and shedding plenty of sweat, or out for a jog and get caught in the rain, you won't have to worry about your earphones getting wet and have to cut your time short. You can learn all about these amazing earphones at studio.com slash neo-white. That's N-I-O-white. And don't forget to use the promo code OSTIUM15 to get 15% off your order. Okay, one last thing. Did I mention the cool colors the Neo earphones come in? You've got your basic black and white, but also a cool moss green, warm orangey sand color, and even an eye-catching turquoise color called Aurora. I was in the market for a pair of good earphones like the Apple AirPods, but didn't want to pay that hefty price tag, and I've been really happy with my Studio Neo earphones. So head on over to studio.com, that's S-U-D-I-O dot com, And remember to use the promo code OSTIUM15, that's O-S-T-I-U-M-1-5, when you check out to get 15% off your order. Thanks, and enjoy the show. It is 1.14 on Thursday, May 27th. Today we're at Crane Creek Canyon Regional Park. I'm your guide, Alex Lander. Another nice blue skies, warm day. Summer is definitely starting to rear its head. It's actually pretty warm by my house, but then I come out here to the park, regional park. So wind has come up, so it's just perfect. Nice warm sun, but the breeze is keeping things nice and manageable. There's kind of an interesting thing that happens here in Northern California where you keep coming back to regional parks and going on hikes through the year and over the winter when it's not raining everything turns nice and green and beautiful and then as you keep doing it through spring and then into the start of summer here everything starts to turn yellow and brown and dry and each one is really beautiful in its own right it's just fun to see the seasons changing as a plants and trees and everything changing too. Today I'm going to be talking about how I work, which is kind of my process for writing and working. And then after that we'll talk a little bit about chapter lengths and my thoughts on chapter lengths. I want to start this off by saying that um, under the 
topic of how I work, this is specifically me. It's how I've kind of learned over the years and decades now of writing and working, of what works for me, what works with my process, and it has changed a lot and continues to change year to year, month to month even sometimes, depending on what I have going on. Um, but to take that into context and think that, you know, this is something that works personally, specifically for me. It may not work for you. Parts of it may work for you. Or it may all work for you, too. It depends. It's, it's good to try different uh, approaches, different systems for your writing process, especially if you're struggling and having issues with it just to see if they can help you break out of whatever rut you might be in. And it might be a case of when you do break out of it, then you go back to your old process and it works fine. Or it might be that you stick to your new process. That's uh, really over the years I've been working and writing what I've taken most as useful information and feedback is to never not get too stuck in my ways, to continue with what works for me with what process works for me and what system. But then if it stops working, try something else, try changing things up, even just taking a break from it and trying something else for a bit, or not doing anything for a bit and then coming back to it, just trying different ways and being open to that, being open to giving yourself a break, giving yourself time off, giving yourself the chance to try something else, and, and being open to that and not feeling that you have to be stuck in this specific way of doing it, that there is no one way to write, to create. That may be plenty of books out there that tell you how to write a novel, how to write a story, how to craft it all together, and parts of it may be true, but really there's no one that can just say, this is how you need to do it, and you need to follow it exactly this way, because it's not going to work for everyone, guaranteed. Parts of it might, but for the most part it probably won't. So you take what you can, and you kind of create your own system, which is what I've done over the years. Um, Talked, had episodes on writing goals and what works for me. Sometimes I do writing goals for the year. Sometimes I totally forget. And that's fine. I still get work done. I still do things my way. Uh, I've gone over in that episode too of having too many writing goals. Or if you have too few, there's a balance to be achieved, just like with everything, really. Um, and I really feel that one thing you have to take into context is what's going on in your life what your day job is like if you have one how much that takes from you both mentally and physically where if it is a lot of work that you can't expect yourself to write for three to five hours or whatever it is after work to expect that much from yourself if you can't do it you can't just keep pushing yourself because then one or the other is going to suffer and you have to accept that but the way you can work with that is you can see if there's certain days where the work isn't so heavy then you can kind of plan to get more done on those days. But again, I feel you've got to give yourself a break that if you have planned to get a couple of hours of writing done that night because it wasn't such a tough day at work, if you don't do that, don't beat yourself up about it. The work will get done. you just got to find the time to do it and make it work for you because then other work can suffer if you're pushing yourself in that way where you're not getting enough sleep which then affects everything else in your life. Or you're doing stuff that then jeopardizes your day job in some way. Or on the other part of this too, which is just as important as work because you need to make money and put food on the table and do what you need to do for you and most importantly for your family, if you have a family. Depending on how big your family is, if you have kids, if you have relatives living with you that you look after, whatever it may be, you always have to factor that in as well. I really don't feel that your family should suffer at the whims of your desire to create in a constant way. You will find time to get the writing done, but you don't need to sacrifice your relationships with your family for that. I feel that's something you shouldn't do. I've never really done that. I've always put the family first. Um, For example, here I've actually been off for like the last six weeks. I've been given this great kind of federal leave that I've got as a federal employee and I've been able to take leave and help my son do distance learning which is great because that means I've been off work it's been paid which is awesome and I'll be able to spend more time with my son and help him do his schoolwork. part of me was definitely thinking at the start of that too wow I'm also going to have all this free time to get a ton more writing done all these hours in the day and stuff and really my writing schedule has barely changed at all I'm still helping him do his schoolwork all you know through the day, at least till lunchtime, 
2 o'clock, depending on when it's done, and that's still sucking up all my time. And then after that, I've got household chores to do, help out my wife, do different things. All these things take up time, and they need to get done. I'm not going to sacrifice those because I want to get writing done. I will say I have gotten some writing done. Like today, I actually got like about a 1,000 words, maybe a little less than a 1,000 words done, I think it was, this morning being able to fit in time as my son was doing schoolwork and able to do it on his own. So there has been a balance where sometimes a few days I haven't been able to do it, but like I said, I've been off like six weeks, and I'd say there's probably been three to five days where I've been able to do that. Otherwise, I've just been sticking to my usual schedule of getting writing done at night. And that's what works for me. That was my schedule I've had for a few years now, especially with my day job where I set aside an hour to two hours at night to get stuff done. Um, once the kid goes down between 7 and 8 o'clock, sometimes I might watch something with my wife, um, or other times I might just jump try and jump straight in there with doing the writing and working on stuff. Or, like I said, we'll watch something and then half hour later, usually about the 9 o'clock, between the 9 to 11 o'clock hour or 10.30 hour, that's when I shoot at getting all my creative writing done. And it can be really tough for people who need to get jump started there are some writers that can't just sit down and start you know putting words on the page and get everything out right away and they need to kind of get rolling like you know an old car that needs to start warming up to get going and then once they get going it just pours out of them and they can keep working for hours and that's great but it doesn't really work in a situation where if you do need that time to get started you might find that once you are getting going you only have so much time left before you need to go to bed and get that sleep that you need to actually do the work you want to do Again, this is something that has worked for me. I found, especially with writing podcasts and especially with writing Ostium, I'm always able to pretty much just sit down and start writing and continue where I left off from last time and telling that story. Because, again, that's been going on for years, and I don't know if it's for the characters or the story or what it is, but it's just like I just automatically slot into that world. And even when I'm not sure what's going to happen next, once I sit down and start typing, the words just come out on the page and it just happens, which is really awesome for this kind of schedule for me with my, you know, set hours of being able to write. What has been kind of nice, again, with this um, leave is that I've been able to extend that late night time if I need to a little further, my writing time at night. So, like, last night I was on kind of a roll, so I was able to put add another half hour to an hour of writing and go to bed a little later because it was okay because of the balance with being off. I'm going to be in there earlier to work the next day, being able to work with my son later on and stuff like that. So that all worked out. It has been, I feel, with this leave, I have been have been able to overall not get as much done as I had necessarily planned at the beginning or kind of hoped, dreamed of maybe, but didn't think it was really going to happen, and it hasn't. But I have definitely gotten regular writing done most days and continuously. That's definitely one difference compared to when I do or do, aren't doing my day job. I am doing compared to when I am doing my day job where I can come home some days and just feel wiped and stuff and just feel not like and just not feel like doing any writing that night and I will with this leave there's definitely been very few of those and it's been going really well I have talked as well about before with taking walks, of how much they kind of get my creative juices flowing. So does jogging. That's another one. If you're running, getting the heart rate up, and then not trying to think about anything, just kind of letting your mind wander. Even if I was listening to audiobooks, I would find that uh, my brain would just start working and start plotting and creating and doing stuff. So that would be another thing that might work for some people of kind of getting your heart rate up a bit and getting your body moving and seeing if that generates some creativity. feel when you're on walks in nature or like I am now just sitting on a bench here at the park and hearing the birds and just staring at the beautiful landscape there's not a ton of stuff to distract me there's no tv going you know there's no entertainment going on there's a few cars off in the distance there's a few bugs and birds flying around but nothing to really kind of draw my focus and so I'm kind of able just to look over it all and not have to focus or concentrate on anything and I think that kind of helps to get me going get my creativity going because I'm able to take in these details but not have to focus on them too much kind of just sit back and let the mind kind of work 
almost a bit like when you're trying to fall asleep and you're just trying to shut your mind down and let it do its thing and it starts to just do all these strange ideas and sights and scenes and things going on in your head when you're trying to go to sleep. It's kind of like that, I think, in a way. Because you're not letting your brain work too hard on something or focus too much on something. You're just kind of letting it do its natural thing. And when you're a writer, that's what it likes to do is create and write and make up stuff. I think also taking walks and jogging. And again, this could also be not necessarily jogging outside, but I think going to the gym in some ways too. With that, there's also the balance, of course. Again, if you're staring at a TV while at the gym, I think it's going to be harder to be creative because, again, your mind is focused on what's going on on the TV. But if you're listening to music or whatever and kind of not really focused on anything going on around you and just, you know, being in the moment of exercising and feeling your heart rate go... It does allow you to come up with ideas, generate stories, think about different things, play around with characters or little scenes you've got in your head and kind of see where they go. I also did an episode on writing spaces. This is something, again, that has changed over time with me. And I've happily gotten to the point now where I don't really care where I am. If I want to do some writing, it can be anywhere. Like this morning, I was writing on the couch. And then I saw it was nice outside and not too hot yet. So I went outside and sat on the patio and did some writing there. It really doesn't matter. I don't have to have a space that I say, this is my writing space where I do all the work. And if I'm not there, I'm not going to get anything done. I don't care. I can be anywhere, and the beauty of laptops is you can be anywhere. You're not stuck to a desktop computer or whatever it is. And if you're using an iPad or whatever tablet that you're used to writing on too, it doesn't really matter. There's no limits to, to where you can be to write, or even if you're just writing longhand with a pen and paper. And I think that's another important kind of lesson to take with writing. If you really want to be writing a lot and be consistent and trying to set a writing schedule for yourself, don't try to hinder your schedule your abilities by choosing a spot that you need to have to write a starbucks i mean i can't imagine the number of writers that say i only have to i can only write in cafes and then what did they do last year when everything shut down you know so don't do that try to make yourself as free as possible i mean i could have practically today sitting here brought my laptop with me and done some writing but it's a little warm in the sun the laptop would really hit it up but anyway the point is i could do it and my mind is open enough to give that a shot if it works great i get some running time it doesn't that's okay i tried it it didn't work or whatever again you've got that give and take of being open-minded to stuff and not being afraid to to fail or try something that doesn't work and then throw it aside and try something else so don't hinder yourself with writing spaces write wherever you want to write if you can and if not just write wherever it doesn't matter as long as you've got your writing implement whatever it might be and you've got your ideas in your head it doesn't matter where you are So I think that pretty much is a few points of my how I work, my writing style, of how I've, again, learned over the years to just give myself a break, try different things, see what works. If it works, keep going with it, and always be open to trying newer things and different ways of doing it, not being so set or rigid or decisive when it comes to needing to follow any so-called rules that you've read in a book or a blog post or heard on a podcast. Unless it's mine. Just kidding. No. <laughs> try it. Works great. If not, that's fine. I'm glad you tried it and try something else. The next topic I wanted to talk a little bit about is chapter lengths. Now, this is kind of interesting. I don't know how much you might have noticed reading over the last, I'd say, 10 to 20 years of how chapter lengths have kind of changed a bit, I think. It really also depends on the genre you're reading in. I feel with, like, the fantasy genre, you can tend to have much longer chapter lengths. Uh, Literary fiction, it can be a little longer. I'd say mysteries and thrillers, they can be a little on the shorter side, with a lot more chapters in each book. 
sci-fi. It can be either, really, depending on the type of book. There's definitely something to be said about pacing with chapters, where if you have shorter chapters, you kind of keep a rapid pace going. And whereas with longer chapters, depending, again, on the genre and the type of story you're wanting to tell, it can be in like kind of a slower pace to go and kind of more unraveling the story in a different way. One person who definitely perfected this in his own unique way is James Patterson with his million books that he's written and co-written because he tends to just write out an outline now and then let someone else write it. But if you look at any of his books, definitely the more recent ones, you'll notice that he's got 100 to 150 chapters in every book, even though it can be a three to 400 page book and not that long. And that's because if you check, every chapter is like less than five pages usually, sometimes only three or two. And it's just his style that he's developed. And again, it's a thing with pacing where there are thrillers that you want to keep everything going really fast. It definitely helps you if you're wanting to get through a book faster, I found too. I know when I've read some of his that if you just kind of tear through them, you're, you're less likely to put the book down and then go ahead and do something else. So you want to keep going with the book and try and get further along. I mean, there's... It's almost like a bit of an obsessive-compulsive thing where you're wanting to get through more chapters and get that number higher, you know, and set your own goals of reading it and then get sucked in the story at the same time and want to keep that pace going. But over the last 10 to 15 years, there's definitely been a change with, I think, chapters getting shorter and books having more chapters. And I think it's partly to do with the um, arrival of e-books and everything kind of switching a bit to electronic book format where you have a lot more people just reading on their phones or their tablets or e-readers wherever they might be and definitely with that taking into consideration for um, commute times for people for people commuting to work or wherever they're going that's when they're getting more reading done than they might be usually at home or something like that and because of that it's like usually anywhere from a 20 to 30 minute time slot to an hour and so you only have so much time to get that reading done And I don't know about you, but I always feel good when I can, you know, end a reading session on a chapter. If I don't have that choice, I'll end it on the, you know, end of the first paragraph on the left page pretty much always. But if I can end it on a chapter, it feels so much better. And that way, when you go back to it next time, you're starting a new chapter and starting fresh. And I do think if you look at books over the last decade, the chapters have started kind of shrinking down and books having more and more chapters. And I say this across most genres. I haven't read every genre over the last 10 years but for the most of the genres that I'm reading um, whether it is you know sci-fi fantasy mystery thriller regular fiction historical fiction whatever it might be I have seen the chapters getting shorter and kind of books changing in that way which I think is just kind of an adaptation to the changing times I think too it might be in the future they might switch back at some point I do feel with Nonfiction. I and I read a lot of nonfiction too. I haven't seen this change happen at all. Do they, is those chapter lengths have still stuck to their part because in most cases the author is trying to you know pass along a specific idea in that chapter and they can't really cut it short and then continue with it in the next chapter. That you want to complete that idea in that chapter, so it's going to take as long as it takes whatever the chapter length might be to tell that particular part of the story that they're telling in the whole book. I don't know. Let me know what you think. (laughs) Give me some feedback if you've seen anything like that, too. Anyway, that's my uh, diatribe on chapter length that I've kind of noticed. I'm kind of glad to talk about it because it's definitely something I've been aware of over the last 10 to 20 years of reading. And with that, I think we'll end this episode with a recommendation like I always try to do. So this time I'm going to recommend a book that's actually off of a podcast. The podcast is called Flash Forward, and it's a really cool podcast where the host, Rose Everett, uh, has a set point in the future, and it's kind of a made-up idea, whether it's like living on the moon, living underwater, um, nanotechnology, whatever kind of you know sci-fi futuristic thing it might be, and it's usually set in the next, you know, 10 to 50 to 100 years and at the beginning of every episode there'll be a little kind of audio fiction scene with characters and stuff kind of showing this idea in this future world and then after that the episode will be her the episode will be 
where I was interviewing scientists and specialists and experts in this field and talking about how this you know future might be achieved, this technology, whatever it might be, this idea, and uh, what it would take to do that, when we might get it, what are the pros and cons of it, and kind of hold a big discussion on it. So it's just really fascinating. And so now she has just released a book on that called Flash Forward, a nice little hardcover book. And what's really cool about it is that it's, I think, 10 kind of um, stories. And I think like eight of them are from the show, and then there's two new ones that haven't possibly aired yet or they're not part of the actual show. And what's really cool about it is that at the beginning of each chapter, there's a kind of little comic book like a chapter of a graphic novel of that. So instead of getting your audio fiction bit you would get in the podcast episode, you get this really cool comic telling a little part of that story of this world and this technology. And then after that, there's an essay from Rose talking about it and with quotes from the experts and things like that and what, what, how, how, the, how the technology might be used and what might happen. Again, pros and cons and things like that. So it's a really fun, fascinating book. If you haven't managed to do the podcast yet and you want to do something kind of easier at first, especially if you prefer reading, um, this book would be a great one. Again, it's got all these different artists doing a different comic in each chapter, and it's just really great artwork, great stories. And then Rose does a great job of explaining the technology or idea and going into detail with it and kind of showing where it might go and what might happen with it. So again, that's Flash Forward by Rose Evereth. Hopefully the wind wasn't interfering too much with my recording today. It wasn't too bad. It almost seems like a little lighter now. It comes and goes. And when it goes, it's definitely a warm sun beating on me. Don't think I got burned, but it's definitely a nice warm day out here. Quiet and peaceful. If you would like to support Writing Walks in any way, you can do so on our Patreon at patreon.com slash osteumpodcast where you can do a monthly support at various levels, various tiers, and then you get rewards for that. And in so doing, you get benefits from Writing Walks, but also all my other shows that I have on there, including the Osteum Podcast, Cersei Podcast, Manifestations, done by a good friend of mine, Dwayne Farber. And, um, yeah, you get lots of cool rewards from it, and you get to help me and my team Ostium and making shows and working together and helping to support them and it shows me that you appreciate what I do and you enjoy my shows and I really like that I really appreciate that thank you so again that's patreon.com slash Ostium podcast if a monthly subscription isn't a possible thing for you if you go to my website the main website for all my shows ostiumpodcast.com I recently updated and revamped it, so it has a whole new kind of cool look to it now. Um, there's a support page where you can do various things on there. I have a coffee. I have always various other donation methods, too, you can do. So any support would be greatly appreciated as I do all this stuff pretty much for free, and it's not always easy. I get a little bit from advertising, but appreciate any support from contributors and listeners. Thanks again very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will be back next month for the July 1st episode of Writing Walks, and probably a week or two before that, depending on when I'm going to record it, I'll put up a little poll on Twitter about possible topics, and you guys can vote and pick which topics you'd like me to talk about. And that'll be on my Twitter account, which you can find at BookBanter. You'll be able to find there and follow me get all the news. All right, thanks again for listening, and I will see you on the next Writing Walks.